Hello there everyone, UXW Bill here with you once again, and today I've got an absolutely amazing story about an old EverReady rechargeable battery. The battery that you're looking at right now, as a matter of fact. This story starts back when my brother College 153 and myself were young boys. Back then we had some radio controlled racing cars. And the first thing that we learned about those radio controlled racing cars was the fact that alkaline batteries do not last very long in them. They last about as long as a snowball in the middle of, shall we say, the Gobi Desert could be expected to last. And so we complained to our father, and he dutifully went out and got us a complete set of rechargeable batteries, one for each car. He also got us a plug-in charger. And while it took between seven to ten hours for those batteries to charge completely, oh, they were such a revelation compared to the miserable runtime of the alkaline batteries. As you can imagine, these rechargeable batteries were worked hard, and most of them died. Well, a couple of months ago, my mother, father, and the key keeper, and myself were cleaning out an old key tray, and what should we find in it but this old, from the early 1990s, about 1991, 92, somewhere in there, I guess, EverReady rechargeable battery. So this battery is, at this point, over 20 years old. And I figured that as crusty as it happened to look, because there was a little bit of green growth around the uh, positive terminal, and the back terminal didn't really give much of anything away, but even then, I figured there's no way this battery can be good, because nickel cadmium and other rechargeable battery chemistries don't take kindly to being allowed to sit for years and left in an uncharged condition. What typically happens with a nickel cadmium battery is you get the, these dendrites that grow within the cell's chemistry and they actually puncture plates internal to the battery and they cause short circuiting. So even if the battery's chemistry wanted to take a charge, it couldn't. Now you can do incredibly foolish things like hooking these batteries up to moderately high voltage, high current power supplies that don't mind their output being short circuited in an effort to try and blow the dendrites into pieces that have developed inside the cell. But most of the time, it's a losing proposition. When these batteries develop an internal short or they get some age on them, by and large, they are simply just done. Well, for grins and giggles, I went ahead and I stuck this battery into a charger. And I kid you not, folks, what you're about to witness is nothing less than a miracle. This battery was charged probably somewhere in the neighborhood of, oh, I'd guess about a month, maybe two months ago. I'm not sure if we can get this up to where the camcorder can see it. As much as I like this little meter, it wouldn't have killed Radio Shack to include a stand. We're very close. I'm sure you can see what's going on there. And just to assure you that there is no trickery, no sleight of hand here, I don't know how much current capability this battery has left, but as you can see, it took a full and perfect charge. I would imagine that its current handling capability has diminished somewhat, but hey, for a battery that's over 20 years old and should certainly be dead by now, it's done amazingly well. And that's the amazing and interesting story I wanted to share with you all, so thank you for watching, and feel free to leave a comment if you happen to have one. 